In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion of how to read from files. One thing that we really haven't discussed yet is how do you read all the information from a file? Well, that's going to depend on how much information you know about the file. You may or may not know how big the file is. One thing is for certain, you must know the format of the file. You have to know what format the data is in the file. That's going to determine how you write your code. But you have to remember that you're not necessarily going to know how many data is in the file. Is there 15 or 15 million? You may not know. And you may be handed a file and say, well, there's about a million pieces of data. Well, is it a million or is it a million and a half? You may not know. You may know. And you may know some other particular aspect about the file that is going to be important. So let's take a look. The very first thing that you have to realize is when you're reading from a file, you don't need prompts. So when you look at this right here, who's going to be reading that when you read from a file? Nobody is. So if you were going to read nine pieces of data, this pops up to the screen nine times and you hardly even notice it. But if you're going to read a file with a million pieces of data in it, you probably shouldn't have a prompt. Okay, secondly, one way that you can deal with the issue of how to read from a file, and of course you're going to be using some sort of a loop because you're repeating the process, is if you could mark the end of the data with a particular value. For instance, let's suppose that all of the data is positive. Then you could put a negative value at the end of the data and use a loop to, to read until you get to a negative value. So in general, when you're reading from a file like this, you can kind of pretend like there's this little pointer here. As soon as you open the file, it points to the first data item. And every time you read, it moves over to the next data item. When I read in the very first value here, that's going to put 3 into that variable there. And then the little pointer is going to move over to the next data item. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into a loop while num not equal to negative 1. Well, we read in a 3, so it's not equal to negative 1. I'm going to process the data, and then read the next value. So I will read in 3, and then 11, and 34 each time processing until I read in that negative 1. That marks the end of the data, and that's what's going to terminate that loop. Well, of course, that depends on you being able to put a value there that is of the same type, but it is outstanding in some fashion. And you may not be able to do that at all times. Okay, so let's take a look at another case. Suppose you know, a priori, the size of the data set. Somebody hands you a file and says, I know there's exactly 16,284 pieces of data in there. Well, then you can create a for loop because you know ahead of time exactly how many data items there are. And so you jump into the loop, you read in, you process the data, whatever it is, and loop. Now, suppose you don't know how much data is in the data set. The size of the data set is unknown. Of course, you're looking at it here. You know there's nine, but suppose you can't look at it. You don't know. There are two ways to do this. There are two ways to read the entire set of data. One, I think, is much easier than the other, and that is simply to form a while loop and put the reading of the data in the expression for the while. This will return true as long as there's something to read. So you read in, you process the data, whatever it is, and then you jump back through to the expression of the while loop. This works beautifully. There is a way for you to screw up, though. Let's take a look. While, fin, stream, num, and then fin, stream, num, process, data, num. What's the problem here? The problem is you read in, the first element, then you read in the next element, throwing away that guy. Skips every other datum. That's a bad idea. So be careful about doing something like that. Let's take a look at the case where you've got two different kinds of data. In this case, we've got a number and then a string. How do I read this information in? We're going to use the extraction of data in the expression of the while loop to get the integer information. And then inside the loop, we'll do something similar. We're going to extract the data for the name 
data, and that is for the name data. So I read in a number, read in a name, process those two items, and then go back and loop through. Another way to read in an entire file and stop at the appropriate point is using the EOF function. EOF, it's a function call. It's a member function of the class of objects to which FIN, F-I-N, belongs. You have to understand how the EOF works. Now, EOF will become true when you're at the end of the file. It's false as long as you're not. Watch carefully. And I put in red here the most important aspect of this that you have to understand. And that is that EOF becomes true only after trying to read past the last datum. I read the 3. EOF is false. Read the 1. EOF is false. 34, false. 56, false. 3, false. 14, false. 12, false. 6, false. I read the 124. EOF is still false. Then I attempt to read nothing. There's nothing there. It's only after I attempt to read nothing, not before, but after I attempt to read something that isn't there, that EOF becomes true. Well, if you realize that, then you know the code has to be like this. We have to first read in the, the very first value, and that's necessary just in case it's an empty file. We test EOF. If that is false, then, oh, you know, this is a, an error. This should be not right here. Then I'm going to process the data and read in the next value. As a last example, we're going to read data from a file and write it out to another file in squared value. So I declare an IF stream. I declare an OF stream. I'm going to open my connection from the in stream to input.dat. That's where my data is. I'm going to open the connection from out to output.dat, jump into a loop, and I'm going to read in the loop every value that's in the input.dat file, and I'm going to write it out to the output file. I'm not going to write out just the data, but the data squared. And I'll put a space between them so I can tell one from another. I'm done. I close the in, I close the out, and I return, and that's the end of that. So now you can create file streams, connect them to files, input data, use that data, process it, massage it, do whatever you need to do, and you can output data to a, a file. Incidentally, you see that we created this output file stream and connected it to this, output.dat. Does that file have to exist when you connect? No. This is going to create it. If you were to run this program, then you go out to the Unix environment and look at a listing of your files, and you'll find that you've got a new file called output.dat it will actually create it. The file does not have to exist. It creates it. Of course, the input dot dot does have to be in existence when you connect. So that's the end of this session.